Yeah, thanks so much for coming. This is great. Uh, I've been reading your blog since like a month after it launched before the New York Times. And thanks to you, I made a lot of money in this last election by oh, good, yeah, proving yeah. stupid people <laughs> really wrong. Um, but my question is a little bit about the polling itself. A lot of polling organizations, because of the work you've done, can pretty much now measure themselves against what was right and what other polling organizations did. And that kind of, I think, has an endogeneity problem going forward. And I wonder how you think polling organizations are going to adapt and if that can kind of screw up for the results of yours and even kind of make things a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, so, you know, if you're trying to calibrate a Cisco model and like pollsters are, then you don't want to, uh, there's the risk of overcompensation. So here, for example, in 1990, I think it was, you had an election where, uh, where the Tories were way underestimated um, and people conceived an idea called the shy Tory factor, I think it is, where the idea is that, well, the Tories have a poor brand, so people didn't want to admit they were going to vote for them, but then they actually did, right? Um, and so you had some pollsters tweak the results in the next election and would kind of overweight responses to Tories or say that we're going to assume the undecided vote will break uh, toward the conservatives. Um, that can be really dangerous, I think, where, where you know, every election has its own kind of factors. And so instead, the idea should be, uh, uh, let's work from first principles and take the best sample that we can, right? A lot of pollsters in the US now will, uh, will not bother to actually go and try and call everyone. The response rates are only about 10% in some polls. So the polls are very, it's actually only like weird people now really answer polls, if you think about it. Uh, <laughs> Most people have better things to do than to spend 15 minutes on the phone with a pollster. So they're trying to make inferences about, uh, about who actually will vote and who won't based on a very limited and self-selecting sample. And so it's kind of a miracle that polls have done as well as they have. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that there's some evidence that pollsters actually, uh, actually cheat and herd off one another. So, uh, so bad pollsters, those using shoddy methodology, cheap methodology, um, tend to gravitate toward what the good, expensive pollsters are saying in the end. They're not really independent of one another. Um, when you have that type of herding behavior, like you have in the stock market, for example, um, what you can have is, is big but occasional disasters, where if everyone is not, at, not behaving independently, they'll go in one direction or another, um, then sometimes the blind are going to lead the blind, and you're going to miss an election very big as a result. Um, and it will probably happen in the US sooner or later. Uh, it's one reason why I'm trying to diversify my, my portfolio of things. As much as we try and say, well, we're trying to measure, measure the probabilities, right? And so, for example, if we say, um, you know, in the 2010 election, the Senate result was very uncertain, for instance, in the United States. We're trying to, to weigh things against a probability scale. Um, but people have trouble perceiving that, so you always are going to do better if, if the favorite wins, basically. And sometimes we know the favorite won't win, and we'll probably sooner or later have an embarrassment, which is much larger than just kind of overestimating the, the Lib Dem vote a bit and be totally way far off, call the wrong president to win, and then I'll be, you know, kind of ruined, I suppose, even though we know all along this is going to happen at some point in time. So, um, so I, you know, I hope pollsters aren't, aren't, uh, aren't trying to change their results to look better in the 538 formula. You want to have um, independence. Crowds are wise when they, when they bring a number of different points of view and not, don't herd and drift off one another. Um, and, so, and so, I don't know, it's a great question though. <laughs>